بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ونوالا أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال تبارك هو تعالى كما ورد في سورة علي عمران يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي آمين يا رب العالمين as you live in the community, you might have heard these conversations before I can introduce the topic. Um, so your kids go to Islamic school? Yes. But what's the point of keeping them in isolation from the real world? Eventually they will go into the college. They will go into professional life. They need to have the experience. You must, you must have heard that conversation. And then second brother will come, oh, your kids go to public school. But that's trash. You know what happened in public schools. Then third brother will come. Oh, your kids are going through homeschooling process. How you will compensate the socializing. Human being and we Muslims, we are no different. We are arrogant people. If my kid is going in a one model of a schooling system, I will going to defend that. Even in the family gatherings, even in the community gatherings, instead of realizing that each and every schooling system have their pros and cons depending on the need of the individual if i am practicing muslim maybe my for me one model will work more than other maybe some people have their different needs based on their different lifestyle all of us we have this conversation if you're thinking from a practicing muslim standpoint because wherever muslims are living as in a minority and especially in america because of the american dynamics one of the biggest concerns which you can have as a practicing Muslim, again, I'm saying as a practicing Muslim, is that what will be the future of my kids? Once I will die, will they be practicing Muslim? Or let's just start with once they will be Muslim or not. That's a genuine concern because we are living as a minority. And then on top of that, the stories which we hear every now and then. In every community, there are cases where kids have change their religion and that's real story. I'm not trying to scare you. And yes, this community is no exception. And yes, some of them were graduates even from the Islamic schools. So the point is that to blame Islamic schools or the other systems, let's start with the basics. So what I'm going to do, inshallah, I'm going to tell you five things which we need to do to preserve and to protect our kids' religion. Yes, schooling is one, but there are others five things and it's easy there is no rocket science it's easy if we can do these five things right hopefully we can do our part and then inshallah leave the rest of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so at least tie the camel and then leave i uh, trust allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the way whatever i'm saying it, it, this is mentioned by 31 scholars wrote a book nadrat al naim fi makarimi akhlaqi rasul al kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it's a 12 volume book and in the first it was actually written under the supervision of uh, imam of haram uh, Sheikh Salah al Hamid, Salah bin Hamid, and um, um, the first chapter discusses about all these things. How to make sure your kids are Muslim and are practicing Muslim? You need to do these five things. Let's start. Number one, the number one thing which we as a parent should focus, and we as a community member should focus, so that our kids should be practicing Muslim, is family environment more than schooling, more than schooling. And obviously, before I can give you the evidence from the hadith, no matter which schooling system your kids go to, if the home environment is messed up, if they are raised in an abusive environment, eventually they will be one. One of my teacher, Dr. Sarah Ahmed Rahimahullah, used to give this example uh, when he was uh, teaching a workshop on parenting. He used to say that if you are a Urdu speaking couple, husband and wife who is speaking Urdu constantly in home, Will all of a sudden your kid start speaking Turkish? <laughs> One day all of a sudden he started speaking French. No. He will naturally speak what? Urdu or English or whatever he's exposed to. So whatever family have exposed the kid, eventually he will going to practice that. Whatever his input is, his output will be according to that. So family environment does make a huge, huge, huge impact. So if you want to pr preserve and protect the religion of your kids, start from yourself and your responsibility. And actually, this is the message which was given by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We all know this hadith in Bukhari, 
where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, مَا مِن مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِتْرَةِ فَأَبْوَاهُ يُحَوِّذَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ Kids are born in fitra. They are born in Muslim. Whoever is born in St. Vincent <laughs> or whoever is born in U.S., no matter who, what, regardless of their family background, they are born in fitra. They are born on the nature of worshipping one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But their parents make them either a Jew or a Christian or different religion. Again, Rasulullah is saying the parents have a huge impact in changing their kids' religion. So that's number one thing which we have to pay attention before we can say, oh, this is schooling system or this or that. Let's just start with the family environment. I, I'm not saying that obviously this, there's no exception. We have the exception of Nuh alayhi salam. He must have done everything right, but it's still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides whomever he builds. And that is why Rasulullah sallallahu also said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulin an ra'iyati in Bukhari. Every father, every mother is responsible for their family. You will be asked question in the day of judgment about them. So it's, it's extremely important and we have to understand the importance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this realization. Ameen ya Rabb. So first thing is family environment. We need to make sure that the family environment is practicing Muslim. We are practicing Quran and Sunnah so that our kids can be practicing Muslim. If filth of Hollywood and Bollywood and trash of Netflix is being seen in your home, what you will expect come out of it. Second, second thing which we need to do, and the scholar says Al Madrasa, school. Yes, a school does make a huge impact. Because um, seven to eight hours every single day your teacher is spending with your kid. And then the friends in the class are spending with your kid. They will have their influence, especially when kids are young. So school will have a huge impact without going on to the sensitive discussion of what is, which schooling model will work for Muslim. Because for us in Muslims in America, our kids are going into all three models. But if your kids are going to public school, then you have to give extra attention to compensate the deficiency because there's a spiritual deficiency. You have to give extra attention. And I know that there may, can be many reasons. So you have to give extra time from yourself to compensate the deficiency, inshallah ta'ala. If they're going to Islamic school, and Islamic school, when I'm saying Islamic school, there are different variants of Islamic school. Um, some of them are closer to conservative Islam, some of them, because I'm talking about national models of Islamic school. I've seen in New Jersey, I've seen in Houston, I've seen in Chicago. Some of them are closer to traditional Islam, some of them are closer to liberal Islam, some of them are closer to conservative Islam. Whatever they are teaching, they will cover the basics, but you cannot just completely depend on them. You have to do your homework also as a parent to teach, to teach whatever you want, however you want your kids to become as a practicing Muslim. And if they are doing homeschooling, then you have to do their, pro, their own pros and cons. You have to compensate their socializing. But you cannot say a schooling system will do everything and I can just chill and eat nachos. No, you have to do your homework. So these two things are going to have a huge impact. One is um, the home environment. Second is schooling. Third, what the scholars have said is the masjid. And this is a little surprising. What must it have to do with my kids' religion? And the examples they brought, subhanAllah. If the masjid is youth oriented or active masjid with the programs geared towards youth activities, you will see that youth is more welcoming in the masjid. They love to go to the masjid because masjid is just not the name of having few walls where you pray five times a day. Masjid is a place where you can go and you can feel a home. And for us, the comparison for any masjid is Masjid and Abu of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam back in the days. Masjid and Abu back in the days when Rasulullah was there, he would never prevent even small kids to come to the masjid. Yes, even if they were crying, he would reduce the size of the salah. He would shorten his salah. We all know the hadith in Bukhari. But he would never say, oh, who brought this, these kids into the masjid? Actually, on a, on a, on a, on a fun fact, um, oh, one of my teacher was asked um, in the masjid that, uh, is it okay to bring kids to the masjid? So he, he knew that why the parents are asking this question. So he says, see, kids are of two different kinds. One kid is Yajuj and Majuj, the other kid is Harun and Musa. So if your kid is Harun and Musa, bring them. If 
the kids are of Yajuj and Majuj kind. Make sure you bring them, but keep them with you <laughs> before they will do Mufsiduna fil Arab. So that is, um, you, cannot, you cannot say, no, don't bring your kids because eventually if they won't come to the masjid, especially in the West, where else they will go? What are the options? But especially when they are teenagers or preteen, when they start having identity crisis, you have to bring to the masjid and you have to ask the masjid if they're not already doing youth activities. Start youth groups. Masjid without youth groups is dead. Not even in coma, is dead. You need to have active, active youth groups, active youth programs so that they can come and they can preserve and protect their religion. One of the hadiths which comes into my mind from uh, Musnad Ahmad um, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in, in Masjid Rabbi Anas bin Malik radiallahu anh, reported Kana uh, shabab min al-ansar sabi'ina rajulan yusammuna al-qurra There were 70 companions and this can be metaphorical that many young companions, shabab, young companions they were called as al-qurra because of their recitation, because of their time they gave to the Qur'an they kanu yakuna fil masjid. They used to spend time in the masjid in the day. And in the evening, they will go out in the streets of Medina. What they are doing, they are basically connecting themselves to the masjid. This will really help you if you can do this. Inculcate in your kids that you have to go to the masjid. That's your second home. If you want to go somewhere and your kids don't want to come, don't ask them to stay at home. Say, okay, stay in the masjid. Have that connection from the masjid. You know, subhanAllah, in our times, whatever disagreement you have with the masajid, keep it with you. Don't pollute your kid's mind. Because eventually, eventually, with whatever disagreement you will have with the masajid or with these religious organizations, if you pollute your simple mind of your simple heart of your kid, eventually they will have ill feelings towards these organizations. And eventually they will have a huge loss. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clean our hearts. Ameen, Ya Rabb. Fourth thing. So I said this. Family environment. We need to take care because we are responsible. A schooling system. Then you have masjid. And then fourth is friend circle. Jama'atul Aqran. This is also, those scholars said that this will have a huge impact. Especially in every age, you will have influence of your friends. Peer pressure. Even in our age or even older than me. Every age, we have influence of our peers, but especially when they have identity crisis in preteen, in teenage, that's the time when you need to give them good friend circle. They need good friends in that age more than the good imam or a good khatib, actually. Because Rasulullah says, Al maru ala khalilihi. You will depend on the religion of your friend. It's straightforward hadith. If you want to preserve the religion of your kid, give them good friends. Al maru ala khalilihi. You will depend on the religion of your friend. He said, فَلْيَنْزُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِمْ He says, watch out who are your friends. They will define your religion. He says, وَلَا تُصَحِبْ إِلَّا مُؤْمِنًا in Abu Dawud and Sahih Hadith. Do not be very good friends except that they are practicing Muslim. You can be friends with everyone, even with non-Muslims, general, regular friendship. But with really good friendship, that, can, that should only be practicing Muslim because then you will start taking influence. All these hadiths tells us that you need to provide good friend circle. And the last thing before we can end, inshallah, the scholar said that home environment is important, schooling is important, masjids is important, friend circle is important. But in our times, parenting have one more dynamics, which back in the days they didn't have. And that is mass media, social media, cell phone, I remember when television came, I remember those scholars gave fatwa, oh, television is haram. It's not haram, I'm just telling you that there were fatwa. Then the computer came, desktop, not the laptop. And then they said, no, no, don't give desktop to your kids. That's haram. It's not haram, I'm just telling you the fatwa. Then the laptop came, it can move, it's mobile. Oh, that's haram, that's danger, they can take into their rooms. And now you have cell phone and tablets, and now you're in a smartwatch. So now you have to be really smart of how to control that. You can do all those four things right, but if you are not organizing or managing these things, social media, mass media, cell phone, the filth they can be exposed to, these are dangerous things. This is like giving, giving firearms to your kids who are not mature enough. Spiritually, they are deadlier. There can be positive and good use of it, and then there can be other side of it. So 
the way they are exposed to the things which they are not supposed to be exposed in those ages. We need to be very careful about that. And obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of protectors. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our kids and to protect our progeny, to make them better Muslim than us and to make them Ibn Taymiyyah and Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah of our time inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, please make dua for the entire ummah. Allahumma ansuri al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma khzul man khzal adina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la taj'alna ma'ahum. Allahumma ansuri al-Islam wa al-Muslimin fi Falastina wa fi Gaza wa fi kulli makan. Allahumma la taj'alana zamban illa ghafarta wa la hamman illa farrajta wa la daynan illa qadayta wa la hajata min habaij dunya wa al-akhira illa qadayta ha ya arham al-rahimin wa la maridan illa shafayta wa la maytan illa rahimta wa la dalan illa hadayta arham al-rahimin. Allahu Akbar